All right, welcome physics to your next flipped class lecture. Uh, we're talking today about vectors, and uh, you've already been introduced to that word in the last chapter, where it talked about the difference between a vector measurement and a scalar measurement. Uh, but here we're actually te teaching you how to manipulate vectors. You're going to be doing a lot of math with vectors here in this class, and this is a just a quick overview of that. So uh, again, if you have any questions as we go, please feel free to post them in the comment section at the bottom of the blog page, and I will answer them as soon as I can. Feel free to pause the video if you need to to write something down, uh, because again, I'm moving fairly quickly through this. You can control how long this takes, okay? So here we go, moving into vectors. Um, remember that a vector value is a value, a number that has not only a number, which we'll call a magnitude, but it also has its direction. So um, the opposite of this is a scalar measurement, right? So a scalar measurement would be something like um, it is 72 degrees outside. It's not a 72 degree direction, it's just 72 degrees outside, or, or a, a mass statement, um, you know, like uh, a, a telephone weighs a certain amount of, of grams or kilograms. That would be that would be a scalar measurement. There's not necessarily a force or a direction or something implied by that. But if you say that you, in order to leave my classroom, you have to walk, uh, I'm going to estimate now 15 or so meters that way, then you're going to be you're going to be looking at a direction as well as a distance. Because if you walked 15 meters the other way, you'd be floating in space and falling probably into the parking lot. Um, but 15 meters that way gets you out of my room. So um, direction and magnitude are a vector. Vectors can be graphically represented with an arrow, and I will show you that in just a moment. So um, when you are working with vectors, it's not just a number on the page. It's a number that has a direction, and we have to keep that direction in mind at all times as we're messing with vectors because it's not just the number. Okay, It's a number and a direction. So when we draw vectors, these are some examples of what a vector might be when you draw it. Um, you will experience a vector that has a certain magnitude, and we represent that with the length of this arrow, um, and a degrees from a certain given orientation. So in this case, I said this is a vector with a magnitude of 4 newtons. You'll understand what that means very shortly. Um, and a degree of negative 20 degrees. I've come down from the horizontal 20 degrees, and uh, with a force of four newtons. And this might be pushing on something. Let's say you're, uh, I don't know, you're, you're, you're pushing a car downhill. I don't know why you'd let the car run downhill. Maybe the car's driving downhill with that much force pushing it forward. Something. You've got force going down on an object, okay? Uh, this is another example of a vector, seven newtons of force at an angle of 120 degrees below the horizontal, negative 120 degrees. You see the horizon line here, 120 degrees, and a force going in that direction of seven newtons. Notice how this arrow is bigger than this arrow because this represents four newtons and this represents seven newtons. And this might be an upward force on an object for one newton. One newton of force going up at an angle of 55 degrees, and that might look like this. So. One newton is a shorter arrow than four newtons. It's a shorter arrow than seven newtons. So the length of the arrow is the magnitude or the value of the number. And then the uh, degree, which way the arrow is pointing, is indicated as well. And both matter. We'll come back to that. Uh, vectors usually represent forces, like I just uh, had the illustration there. And they are drawn starting at where a force is applied. So you wouldn't draw that arrow pointing on a car, if you're pushing the car, you would draw the arrow with the butt end of the arrow where the, where the force is happening, where you're pushing on the car. So the arrow would be like inside the car, if you understand what I'm talking about. The butt end of the arrow is where the force is applied, and then the arrow extends to represent the force. Does that make sense? Um, and we measure angles. Um, there's two kind of common ways of measuring angles. One is to put the, the point, sorry, the butt end of the arrow at the origin of your Cartesian system with the X and Y uh, axis like you used all the time in algebra, and put the butt end of the arrow there and measure how many degrees are above or below the horizon it is. And we measure from the positive side of the X axis, not the negative side of the X axis. And I'll give you a demonstration of that in just a moment. 
if you're looking at maps, which sometimes you will be, we always measure from north and we go clockwise um, from north and it's always positive degrees. You don't have a negative degree on a compass. It starts at zero, goes all the way around in a, in a clockwise manner and ends at 360, right? So if it's five degrees less than 360, you wouldn't say negative five degrees, you would say 355 degrees. Okay, and uh, again, we'll show you pictures of that in just a minute. So here's some examples of force diagrams. Now this is a force diagram from NASA uh, talking, uh, teaching the viewer about why things fly. Um, and so this airplane, all of the arrows start in the airplane. That's the thing experiencing the force, right? Um, the airplane's force goes down for weight. The, the weight of the airplane is pulling it down. And notice the arrow is not above the airplane pushing on the airplane. The butt end of the arrow is in the object that's experiencing the force and it extends from there, okay? Lift is a, it starts in the airplane and goes at a right angle to the flight path. And so um, here lift goes this way and then thrust is in the direction that the plane is moving and, and it's originating from the, from the airplane, from the engines. It's not pushing on the back of the plane, originating in the plane going forward. And then drag, originating in the plane going backwards. So the important thing here, when you do force diagrams, you wanna make sure that the butt end of the arrows is in the object experiencing the force and it extends from there, okay? So there's that. Um, and then the, uh, again, just to show you how we measure angles. In a Cartesian system of the y and the x-axis, where the x is horizontal and the y is vertical, we measure from the horizon, from the positive side of the x-axis, not the negative side of the x-axis. If it's above the horizon, so if it's up here anywhere, then we will say positive, so-and-so degrees. So this would be like positive, I don't know, positive 50 or something like that. Um, if it were over here, then it would be positive more than 90, positive 100, positive 130, something like that. Um, this is negative because it's below the positive part of the horizon. So these are negative degrees. And then again, over here would be negative more than 90 degrees. Um, you could, I guess, technically have a line up here and say it's negative 100, uh, 220, but that wouldn't make sense. It'd be a lot easier to say positive something, okay? Uh, when you're looking at a map, you start from the, the center of the map, you measure from degrees off of north. So this would be like 45 degrees, this is 90, this is 180, this is 270. You don't say negative 90, you would say positive 270. Okay, so it's the opposite of the Cartesian system. Cartesian can have negative measurements, map orientations cannot. Okay, so vector values. Um, in order for two vectors to be the same, they have to not only have the same magnitude, the same number, but they have to have the same orientation. So they have to be the same size arrow going in the same direction for them to be equivalent. Vectors can have an equivalent magnitude going in different directions, but it's not the same vector. It doesn't mean the same thing, okay? And then when you're messing with vectors on diagrams, feel free to move them around. Quite often, it is very convenient to pick a vector up and draw it again somewhere else. And as long as it's facing the same direction and has the same magnitude, it means the same thing. So um, don't feel like you have to do all of the math you're about to see with a vector stationary on the page. You can move it around if it helps you think about vectors. So here's an example. Um, these are the three vectors I showed you before. If I were to tell you that these are three forces op uh, operating on the same object, and I wanted to add you to tell me where is the object going to go in response to these? Well, you could do two things. You could orient them all so that they start and end at the same place. And pardon me while I fiddle with that concept, but let's say that we're going to, let's see, move that down just a little bit. And there you go. Those two start at the same place. And then, oh dear. And then this one. Let's make him start at the same place. Uh, everything needs to come down in just a minute. Um, let's see, let's grab this guy and grab this guy and we'll move them all down so we can see it. Okay, perfect. So these three vectors are now acting on the same object. So let's say, that, I don't know what this is. This is a 
some bird in flight and we're analyzing all the forces on it, wind shear and weight and thrust and all that stuff, right? And I, I've identified three forces on this object. Well, I could look at it this way and then the question, which way does the bird actually go? Well, you see that this is a bigger force. So this is gonna be winning in the war of forces, but not necessarily so that the bird is going to just go this direction because, well, these guys, these guys have something to say about that too. You could also arrange the vectors in a way so that you add the vectors, and I will show you that now. So to add a vector, you take one vector and you put the butt end of the next one that you're adding to it at the tip of the one that, of the other one. And now you can put these guys together. So they've got a tip of one vector to butt of the other vector. And now let me, let me see. Can I get all these guys at one time? Yes, good. Okay. And now I will understand that the bird is actually going to go in the direction of from here down to here. Okay, and what I've just done is I've added these vectors. I've moved them around so that the tip of one points to the butt of the other. And the end of the chain is the sum of the vectors. So let me give you that in words. Vectors can be added graphically by moving the tip of one vector to the tail of another and drawing the resultant vector as the hypotenuse. If there's two, you've arranged one and then the other and then the line that connects them makes a triangle. In this case, I just showed you we actually have three. But it's the same idea. Drawing from the beginning to the end of the line of arrows will give you the same exact vector. Okay, And that's the sum of vectors. So you can add vectors graphically this way. Subtraction is the same, but you have to flip the direct direction of one of the vectors. So let's mess with that for just a moment. I've added these three vectors. My result vector is going to be right here. And let's make that a color you can actually see. Okay. And it starts from the origin and it goes to the, uh, the, the end. So the resulting vector is this direction. Okay. And uh, I could measure it off of the horizontal. This is almost 90 degrees. So I would say this is maybe 80, 85 degrees, something like that from the hor horizontal. And on my scale of all of these vectors representing a certain amount of force, I could measure the length of that arrow, and that'll give me the magnitude of the answer. Now you say, but wait a minute, you added those in a particular order. Oops, just kidding. What happens if, uh, if you don't add them in that order? Does it make a difference? No, it doesn't, and I'll demonstrate that for you. So I'm not going to change the length of any of these. But let's say I added, let's say I added these guys in a different order. So... I'll take this one and I will add um, him last and I'm going to stick this guy down here first, something like that, and then I'll add him third instead of second, right? I'm going to put him right here. And now I bring the resultant back that I had gotten from my first time and you'll see it still works. So um, no matter how you add the vectors, as long as you are careful with getting the tail of one to the point of the other, you will have the same resultant, okay, the same resultant vector. So that's one way of adding them. Now, um, you can subtract vectors as well. To subtract a vector, you just change the orientation of, of one of them, right? right? So right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forget about this guy for a minute. I'm going to put him back here. Oops. Wow, look at that. That's cool. I'm going to put him out of the way. We're forgetting about him for just a moment. I, instead of adding these two vectors, I'm going to subtract them. So to add them, I would just now draw my resultant vector. I'm going to now take this vector and subtract this vector. Subtraction means you change the orientation of one of the vectors. So instead of it being um, pointing in this direction, I'm going to take that arrow and I'm going to flip him around so that um, the other end 
is the tail and the other end is the origin, right? And that diamond doesn't mean anything. I just had to do something with the tail of the, of the vector. So now I'm going to say, okay, I'm taking this vector and I'm subtracting the other. Notice I have to move them around because this guy just got flipped. But this vector now minus the other vector, you flip the orientation and then you draw it still point to tail. Okay, now my resultant, the answer to the question is not that color. The answer to the question, sorry, is uh, drawn from the tip, I mean from the tail to the tip of the chain. And now this is my answer. So when you subtract, you do the same thing. You just take the second vector, flip its orientation, and then move it around and draw the connecting point, and then you're done. Okay, so that's adding and subtracting vectors. We, there is another way to do it. Obviously, there's some trigonometry involved, and you can uh, you can do other ways of arranging arrows. But this is the simple way, and we're going to mess with this first. And then next time we're together, I'm going to teach you the little bit more complicated way of getting it done. So, if you have any questions, post them in the comments field. I will see you tomorrow in class. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.